All right, Norm. Adam. <laughs> well, um, this is an interesting assembly because uh, you're going to assemble a piece for your collection today. Um, but it is exactly a thing that I did about a week and a half ago, and I, I didn't film it. Reader, sometimes I don't film everything. I'm sorry, Gunther's shaking his head. Every now and then I gotta do one just for me. <laughs> well, we're getting it today, the assembly of a Amando blaster. And this is from War Machine Paintball. Um, I had seen this kit show up. It's a, as you can see, there are a lot of parts to this kit. It is, um, it is a non-trivial kit to put together, but I did some checking after I bought it and it's super accurate. It's real. I don't think, I, I mean, I'm sure if I held the original up, I'd, there'd be a bunch of little differences, but it's as accurate as I could as I could determine. And as you guys can notice now, these aren't cast pieces. These no. are all machined aluminum pieces uh, that we've had since Blacken. But like you said, it's a lot of components. There are springs, pins. It comes together like a real thing. It does. And uh, th the blackening process is one that I tried for the first time with my Samaritan. And again, for a weathered steel finish, I've never seen a better a, a better treatment. And that got me really excited. So uh, the same friend who blackened this for me, I sent these parts and then we sent your parts. So we're going to assemble you a Mando Blaster today. Now in the research and the assembly of this, yeah. the Mando Blaster as the props department for Lucasfilm, when they made this, it's based off like a, a real hundred year old gun. That's what gives it that, that like scallop silhouette. In, right. in fact, it's, uh, I wish I could remember the name of the gun. I should have done the research before the video, but that shows you how, how, how terrible my work ethic is. At any rate, yes, it's it's almost identical to this 100-year-old pistol, um, including that like long moon trigger. Mm, uh, the love ac that. It actually, it actually, trigger actually pulls, it doesn't fire anything, the barrel is solid, it can't fire anything, it can't be a real firearm under any circumstances, but um, nice big finger hole for Mando's glove. Uh, this is a fantastic piece. As far as prop, I, I, I must admit, I was considering machining my own Mando blaster because I like, I love what his sidearm looks like, um, but I didn't, I wanted one that felt right. And then I saw War Machine Paintballs, I bought it and I was like, I don't need to make one. Yeah. This satisfies the experience that I was looking for. And something I'm so impressed by, these parts are so clean, they're so nice. No like real deburring needed. Yeah. You know, they're CNC'd parts, mixture of brass and aluminum here. You got the wood grips. Yep. Uh, I just have them laid out here, not knolled yet. Where do we begin? Do you want to talk about some of these? That well, are yeah, there's a lot of little pieces and there's actually some gluing in this kit. Mm. Um, there are, what they did was there are pieces that are applied and rather than troubleshoot every connection being a mechanical connection, there are a lot of connections that are like slight press fits. For instance, this front sight, which sits uh, here on the, uh, on the front of the barrel, um, this is a milled hole and this is a laser, it looks like a laser cut part and it doesn't quite fit. You'll have to, we'll have to take the corner off those four corners and then use this little thwacker to send it home and it's never gonna leave. I mean, wow. you could pull it out with a pair of pliers, but it's really nice and durable. And the, the kit is largely like that. There are also um, bunches of little parts like this, this piece here, pins to the long slide here. And what you do is you get it all lined up and you get the couple of pins seated and then you add just a drop of thin crazy glue. And it's not a permanent solution. It's actually a very reworkable solution because you could break those parts apart and re reattach them if you wanted. Um, thin crazy glue is scary stuff to work with. <laughs> you gotta be really careful. It can go everywhere and it can ruin your life and glue your fingers to everything. <laughs> but um, this is a perfect application for it. And then some parts do screw together, obviously with the working mechanism yep, yep. Uh, for the trigger action. Uh, where should I begin? Yeah, um, I think that, so you're going to go for a similar weathered look. I think your best bet is to start off with some quadruple zero steel wool um, and start to, let's, let's start to go ahead and clean this a little bit. And then once this is nice and clean, we'll get to uh, assembling the trigger mechanism and putting that in. And frankly, the one thing about this blackening finish is it's a volatile finish. It's yeah. not like camera equipment anodizing. It's more, um, yeah. 
I mean, scrapes and scuffs, that's what we want. It's gonna show all the evidence of its construction, which actually works great for us. Totally. Um, so I can also, uh, this screw which holds in this cleaning rod is actually holding on the face plate here. Um, and so I can pull that off and pull this back part off and you can see uh, the whole trigger mechanism in here. All and right. And then we can replicate it. Let's do that. It's like reverse dry brushing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly what it is. Right? I'm hitting the same high spots, but I'm removing the blackening as opposed to adding the silvering. God, it's like the fun part first. What's that? It's the fun part first. Well, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. And that gets you, you know, also the neck here of the front barrel, that gets really shiny. Or mm. not shiny, but like... Revealed. Yeah. There we go. That's the trigger mechanism. Also, the uh, the grips are beautifully engineered to just be captured when the gun is put together. Um, there are no visible screws in the Hero Prop, and so uh, War Machine Paintball just did an exemplary job of these little these little rises on these CNC parts that fit the CNC wooden parts. It's just gorgeous. Really impressed. Well, and also you start to think about the wear patterns, right? You start to think about like how this has moved around, where it's been dropped. Um, I'll show you an example. Be right back. Um, this is a demilled Smith and Wesson. This is a replica of Indian. This is not a replica. This is the same Smith and Wesson pistol used for Indiana Jones' first pistol. Uh, and this one's been demilled. It's been welded, so it can't fire. But you see the the finish on it feels very much like this. I mean, but also take a look how many years of this, like the way the corners have been worn off. Yeah, that's the look we're going for. Got the King's Ransom of some classic sidearms here. We got your Noisy Cricket, we got your Ray's Blaster, we got your Gin Urso, your Indiana Jones, your Hellboy. It's a good crew. Be good to go to battle with that crew, right? Jin Urso and Hellboy back to back. <laughs> Seriously, the super thin cyanoacrylate glue, it can make, I've said this before, it can make your day, it can ruin your day. And it can do either one of those things faster than you can think. It also off gas, it's very noxious. Um, the, the, the smell of this is, can like make your eyes sting. Yeah. so. You need a super fine applicator for the thin cyanoacrylate glue, and you need to be super judicious about how you use it. We'll, we'll, we'll show you the technique. I once, we had this wooden box that had to open for a commercial, and I was working for Jamie Heineman. I spent a week making these or ornate brass corners for the box that were tri-folded and hammered in, and I was replicating what the art director had drawn, and the box was so beautiful. And uh, my friend Lauren was doing the finishing and it was like this hand rubbed lacquer finish. And one of the brass corners was sticking up and I couldn't get it to go down. I pulled it off, put it back on. So I used a little thin, bit of thin crazy glue and the thin crazy glue ran down the front of the finish of the hero side, of the camera side of this hero freaking prop. And I watched Jamie like, see it and be like, all right. Mm. <laughs> his head got red, that's his mood head. Uh, he didn't show consternation in any other way, but he went and did the most amazing thing. So the, the, the CA glue had actually worn, it wore, it ate away some of the finish, so there was a visible dip. So Jamie took a bunch of Crayola crayons and hand mixed with a lighter and some crayons, a wax that matched the front finish and filled in this gap and then sculpted it and added in the wood grain and you couldn't see it on camera. Amazing. It was amazing. That's my thin CA glue story. Jamie fixing my big screw up. 
yeah, when you start to put this together, it's so much fun too. Also, there is a, um, there is a spot treatment called aluminum black uh, that's made for gunsmiths. And uh, it's, that's uh, much more of a home process than the blackening for this, which is a multi-step acid process. It is a mild acid and you wanna use gloves when you use it, but if there are any parts you wanna to touch up, I've got some aluminum black here and you'll see, like you'll do the same thing. You'll clean it with a little acetone and then you could apply with like a cotton swab or a, 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 you know, an applicator just a little bit and it'll blacken it down. Or some just oil paint will work also. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dark oil paint would be a great pass on this. Yeah. Um, all right, I, I'm gonna take more off as it comes together. Yep. And uh, But I mean, already transformed, right? Yeah, tell. This, this all of a sudden looks like a real piece of kit. Um, go ahead and turn that over and let's start assembling the internal trigger mechanism. There are four pins that are roughly the same length. Yep, one, two, three. Um, so there's your, yep, there's your one, two, three, four. And here they are, one, two, three, and four. So go ahead and put your trigger in with two of those. Two. Okay, there. and so now there's this little do-hunky here, this little funny guy there, yep, that. Yep. And see how, see how it sits? No, it's the other, yep, the other way entirely, 180. Yep. Yep. And you want to take this spring and sock it in there. So you can use oh, wow. um, yeah. you know, the tweezers maybe to hold it back. This is without a doubt the kind of the most complicated part of the build. Yep. Okay, so now, now you want to put the pin in there. Uh, yep. Right here, yeah. And you'll find it has, a, it'll, it'll find a home. There you go. Yep, it'll find does. a home there. Now there's this little uh, hunky. There it is. That guy. And this guy. What you can see here is that this that connects to that pin. See On the this? bottom, yeah, underneath. So you pull that pin out, slide that thing in there. Go ahead, I'll uh, hold this down. I see, it goes in between, yep. yeah. There you go. And then you wanna slip that little tiny spring back behind there. You could do it after you put the pin in. Okay, let's put this pin in. There's a little pocket for that spring right back here in there. So what you wanna do is, you might wanna grab one end of this mm -hmm. and slide it in and then push it down. So let me, uh, here, I'll move that so you have more room to tilt that up. Okay, go ahead and sock that in and it'll find its home and just like basically jigger the, jiggle the brass trigger until you feel it yep. seat. Yep, that's, that's in. So now that's most of the trigger mechanisms, really well designed. And then the last piece is this guy, which goes in in a way that looks backwards, but is actually correct. Um, oh yeah, springs. You need both of them. Yep. Then you take the um, this cover plate. So this is a working mechanism now? That's a working mechanism. Let's, uh, You're let's done. Do, let's do a pause and, and, and show. <laughs> All right. So this is replicating the mechanism here. Yep. How close is this mechanism, or how similar is this to you know like when you built your Samaritan? And uh, pfft, the difficulty with the Samaritan for the trigger mechanism is that there's a huge amount of space between where the trigger levers and where the levering needs to have an effect. Mm. That makes this mechanism really, really difficult. In most guns, there's it's there's less you have to do less throw. So this is a much more efficient, much more like pistol-like arrangement. Yeah, wow, two springs and a spring <clears throat> here. And, and I, if I, yeah, I wouldn't back, try cocking it yet. Okay. <laughs> I want to put the plate on. I did it and if and things it, fly, it holy off. shit. Yeah, this is where the institutional experience comes <laughs> in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so throw on that cover plate and put in the screw that sits on there. It's, there should be a screw in here that looks like this. There it is. So that sits there and go ahead and just uh, screw that down. Yeah. Now go ahead and pull the hammer. It should cock. And Spring right there. Pull the trigger. Uh oh. Oh, there it goes. Spring. Isn't that lovely? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit again that crescent right there. It's beautifully done. It's really, really lovely in the design. I have to uh, imagine. I haven't even looked it up, but that like the. The actual mechanics of the pistol, I think War Machine Paintball may have even copied it exactly, mm, you know, yeah. of the real pistol or invented this from whole cloth. I'm not sure. So, 
That's like, I think that's really the most complicated part of the construction. Um, we can put on the, the, the grips. You've got a lot of sanding to do eventually on the grips. Yeah. But for assembly right now, it's very easy to put it all together. So that slides in there and you'll see, yep, you see yeah. how that seats there? Yeah, so. You'll, yep, yep, there like you that. go. And you'll do the other one. Same thing. Now holding those in orientation, you wanna take this guy and place it there. And then you take- oh, That's uh, a really lovely assembly. Yep. Uh, and then, is it this one? Yes, it is. That screw, uh, and it's, there you go. Yeah, you may have to, yep, there you go, you got it seated. And for the grips, you know, they come up, you can tell it's been cnc Yep. but just hit it with some sandpaper. Um, I hit it with 220, 320, and 400. And then I hit it with some furniture polish and I'll actually probably come back in here with some stain and some sandpaper or, mm. uh, and try and make some light spots. Yeah. Um, but this is just 400 grit and, sand and, uh, and furniture polish. Oh, yours has some CNC. Yeah. Oh, you should write to them. That, that's not correct. I mean, it's got some just CNC artifacts in it that they didn't see before they sent it to you. So here's, let's talk about the gluing. Yeah. So, you know, that's gonna get weathered. You might, it, you can still soften that later. You can still pull yep. it pull it out later if you want to. Yeah. Um, but the glue, here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna sock a little bit in here, into that channel. Actually, I just wanna, I just, just wanna soak up just the tiniest amount of it. Oh. Duh. Okay, let's try that. Now, that's great, that's great. I didn't use too much, it doesn't show on the sides. You can just let that sit and that'll be fine. Now that guy, this guy sits in here. You know, the funny thing is, is there's little tiny bits of water left in here, but water is actually an excellent kicker for cyanoacrylate. So it doesn't actually harm you at all. So you put a little dot, on like a little bit at the bottom of there. His, the, the bits are really, really nice. That's it. And then um, we'll drop this in. Yeah, little goes a long way. Oh, a way long here way. Yep. Because the fits and are so, so nice. Now I use a, a kicker for this, but I don't spray it directly on it. I kind of do let it wow. get in the gas of the kicker. And that just sets it. And again, that's a undoable linkage if you want to later, but. But also this is something I can hit with steel wool later as a complete unit. Totally. Tie it totally. all together. I think that's pretty stable. All right. I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. <laughs> okay, so now there are these two little pins on the underside of this. I think those are them, yep. And you'll see. And these are just for alignment? Well, they're alignment, but they actually, so they're super precise. And yes, they're alignment, but understand that when I put, when we put crazy glue there, when we put CA glue. Oh, they will. They. It's a joint, surface yeah. to surface joint and it can't move in any other way. You'll feel it. There's there's literally, mm. that's less than a 10,000th mm -hmm. of, of actual space for it to move. So it's a really, really positive grab for the, for the glue. So I think, I don't think we have anything else to do to this part except do that. So you go hole. ahead and put a little, yeah, put a little on there. Um, yep. You maybe you'll, maybe you'll, yeah, there you go. Oh, perfect, that's great. And then. Good. Okay, I'm just gonna do the same thing with the kicker. Just kind of show it to the kicker. Sometimes when you accelerate CA glue too fast, it can, um, it can cake up and turn white and, there you go. All right. Moving, Moving forward. Moving forward, okay, so. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, we barrel? could assemble. We could assemble the barrel and the barrel. Um, the barrel sight. Yep. And, and the barrel sight needs. Oh, I can actually put mine back together. So here. this needs a little bit of filing. You'll see it fits widthwise. Oh, it's but the, the corners need That's a little it. rounding. Yeah, so yeah. just take off a little bit on those corners. I would use that one. And you are, yeah, you're literally just soak, soak like that. And you're doing a little bit of a taper on it. So when you hammer it, it should seat really nicely. Um, all right, yeah, okay. I think you're close enough. So now you want to hold that. This oh, here, I'm going to give you a thing to hold uh, that in. Yes, that is the Yeah. So park that puppy here in there and hold on to it and give it a nice little thwack with that with that thing. Yep, there oh, you wow. go. You're good. Uh, Amazing. I, and you could drop CA glue in there. It's not really, I don't think yeah. it's that necessary. I think that's, that's totally sufficient. Really good grip. Um, so we can put the barrel in and the uh, rear part Let's see here. Yep, that's correct. The rear part attaches using this guy. Uh, and I get you the Allen for that. Yep, and you stick this up and its jacksy there. expose those right there. Yeah, and so, right, so you'll get that close, and then you're gonna put these in, and they just drop right in, but you'll wanna CA them. Right, and those are basically brackets for the, a long pin. Uh huh. Cross. Yeah, they 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 buttress this spring pin. Okay, there's one, and hold on. Okay. Great. Now, I know it doesn't look like much, but it really is. Now there's this guy. And this guy lays in here, so you want to, you actually want to. glue. Okay, and now. It's a uh, small pin. It is a little button-headed Allen wrench. Oh, I accidentally pulled this out. I was touching it. It's Sorry. this tiny one. Yep, that one. And have, I'm not sure that's the that right. That is the correct. Oh, good. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is um this is a kit in which you really want to make sure that everything you get with the kit, you keep it with the kit because it can get uh, you don't want to lose anything. Again. Oh. Great, nice positive grab. Um, this guy goes with the um, front of that. The opening is yep, so with that facing down. down. The other one, there you go. Right there, and that's off the side here like that. So go ahead and lay that down in the orientation you like. Oh, so here's what I did for mine. I, um, I took a little bit of solder, and this is rosin core electronic solder, which works fine with brass. A little solder down in there and connected it up. So, out like that. And that's just welding it together. Mm-hmm. Pushing apart just a little. Those are one. I love that trick of putting the solder in and then heating it and everything kind of joins. It's really nice. It comes with hot glue. So, go ahead and let that sit down because we're going to do a couple of other things before we get that in. This plate goes there. Then, uh, that screw, yeah, that's a glue on. Yep. Uh, so you can do that anytime you want. And um, yeah, so this screw, nope, that one goes all the way through. Oh, and then it's nice the other side. Yes. Oh. So then, you place this guy, Komsa, Watch your finger because it's hot. Place this guy like that, and oh, that, that guy sits there. In. And then the. Oh, 
Oh, that sits over that, and you screw that down. Wow, and just a nut right there. Uh huh. Uh, on Mando's gun, this is clearly a lighter value. Mm. It, like each time you see a close up of it going in the holster, it's of a lighter value. So I hit this with more steel wool just to kind of like, you know, give it that. There you go. Okay. So, uh, yep. This. It's a cover. It sits down there. Yep. Right. Yep. So. Is Again, you could just put a dot of CA right on the edge and then sock that in and oh, it's just purely you a, could pull it out yeah, later yeah, if you yeah, need yeah. to. Yeah. Good, that's enough. And then there you go. Okay. Now your barrel front. This is the screw for the barrel front. And that slots uh, oh, you want to make sure you've got the I think that's the one for it. It is. Indeed. And now you want to make sure that sight yes. is way up top, right? Yeah. I don't like pointing a gun at someone, even when we're assembling it. Yep. There you go. Okay. Uh, a couple more pieces. So this, this is, is this is the biggest. No, yeah. This is the pain in the ass. <laughs> you were wondering where it was. This didn't get drilled. Oh. The one thing, War Machine Paintball, you forgot to put in the hole in this one. That's all. Just that. It's not a big deal. Great. And. There it is. As long as we hit the kicker in there. Yep. So. so um, Go ahead and sock around, yeah, a little more generously than we did before. Yep, good, perfect. We want to hold that. Mm -hmm. That one I'm letting the kicker really sink in. <sighs> yeah, looks good. Yeah, no, you're good. All right, last That's piece. In. We'll get that cover in. Yeah, you can go ahead and work on that cover. I'll uh, work on this guy. Oh, this one's upside down. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you. <laughs> I, I hate that joke. So now you are 95% assembled. Uh, you want to take the steel wool to it and kind of tie it together and you've got some sanding to do there and you've got a uh, Mando sidearm. Look at that. Thank you so much, Adam. Dude, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. It's really rare that an aftermarket company releases something that is so high fidelity and, and beautiful as an object uh, to both put together and to hold. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. You know, in the past week and a half, stopping by the cave, every time you are applying oil, you have steel wool, that's the fun of just kind of yeah. keeping it weathered. And, uh, and, you know, later weathering passes will add, you know, I'm, I'm toying around with the idea of a very light, clear blue uh, spray over the uh, uh, Samaritan to kind of try and make it look a little like blued steel. Uh, and I may start here with the Mando Blaster, but with both of these, if neither of those finish, if the finish is, a, is like terrible, mm -hmm. I just strip it back down and, re, and get it reblacked, you know? Yeah. yeah. Dude. Dude! Lovely. We'll have links to where people can <laughs> find this kit yeah. uh, in the comments and description below. Uh, just for FYI, it's about 300 bucks. Am yeah. I right about that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Again, lovely kit. My hat's off to War Machine Paintball. Next up is the holster. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta make the leather with the, the Gloves. Leather. It's a slow assembly to get the full armor. <laughs> Something that's gonna happen, I think, oh, this year. Oh, wait, 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 right there. By the way, my favorite gloves are from <laughs> Indie Magnolia. Go ahead and put that on, and oh you can God. hold on to the blaster with the right Indie, with the right uh, Mando glove. The right way to end. So this is Indie Magnolia. He makes some really nice Mando pieces, and I really dig these gloves. They're, they're, they have a great feel. I've been using them in the shop, which is why they're authentically dirty. You can hear the theme song. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> All right, I've got to stop it. <laughs> See you guys next time. <laughs>
Thank you for watching that entire video. If you'd like to support us further, you can head over to the Tested Store. Links are in the comments below, and you can buy things like our demerit badges. You've heard of merit badges. These are the opposite. This one here is for measuring once and cutting twice. We went back and forth whether to measure once and curse twice, because that also happens. We went with the cut twice. And this is one of my all-time favorites. This is when you accidentally release the mysterious blue smoke that makes all electronics work and then they no longer work. You can't release that smoke. Head over to our store, get yourself some demerit badges, and we will see you next time.